Good morning. Good evening to all of you. Thank you so much to join us today. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Souza Richards. I am the International Seed Federation Phytosanitary Affairs Manager, and we'll have a fantastic webinar today. We have Dr. Louisa Rubin with us here today, where we're going to be able to understand a little bit more some of the changes that has been proposed by ICTV on virus taxonomy. I had a brief chat with her before, and uh, I told her that uh, this topic has uh, elicited a lot of feelings on a huge number of plant pathologists and plant virologists across the world. If you go to certain platforms like Twitter, you will see there is a lot of discussion that has been happening for the last for the last two to three years. It is a great pleasure to have you here with us. Dr. Luisa Rubino is from the CNR Institute for Sustainable Plant Protection in Bari, Italy, and she serves with distinction as the chair of the Plant Virus Subcommittee of the International Committee on Taxonomy of Virus, a role that signifies the apex of scholarly contribution to virology, reflecting her dedication to advancing our understanding of plant viruses. Her work has been instrumental in pioneering the way we classify and comprehend the complexity of viruses affecting our plant life. As we continue to face global challenges in agriculture and food security, the insights from Dr. Rubino research have proven to be invaluable. Her leadership in the ICTV Plant Viruses Subcommittee not only helps in shaping policy and practice, but also guides the global scientific community in taxonomy, which is fundamental for the development of diagnostic tools and treatment. As we turn our attention to the profound knowledge she will share with us today, please join me in warmly welcoming Dr. Louisa Rubin. Thank you very much, Rosa, for this kind, uh, kind presentation, Billy. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure to, to, to join uh, you in, in, in this seminar, and uh, I, I hope you will enjoy the journey through virus taxonomy. Now, my name is uh, Luisa Rubino, and uh, I uh, am a researcher of the Italian National Research Council. And uh, uh, I, uh, in the Institute of Sustainable Plant Protection, uh, we are 145 staff people, quite a huge institute covering all the fields of plant uh, protection, uh, we have bacteriologists, mycologists, nematologists, uh, people studying stress. Uh, we are located in five seats in uh, the north and in the south of uh, Italy, and uh, I work in Bari. And uh, Bari and Torino were uh, formerly part of the Institute for Plant Virology, the CNR, and so we are more focused on uh, the uh, study of viruses and virus-like organisms. And uh, we host a collection, the Plant Virus Italy, the Plavit collection, uh, consisting of more than 1,000 isolates. And we are duplicating the collection to have it in both, in both th seats. My major interest is uh, positive strand RNA virus replication, and uh, I uh, study uh, host uh, uh, virus interaction both in plants and using yeast as uh, a surrogate host uh, to elucidate vir uh, host factors involved in virus replication. And I am I'm a senior scientist, which means that I, I'm old because uh, I started uh, my ca uh, career in virology as a student 42 years ago. And uh, I uh, was very lucky because uh, uh, it was uh, the, uh, the dawn of, of plant virology in, uh, in Italy. So uh, uh, I lived exciting times finding new viruses, describing them. And uh, uh, I had the honor to have Professor Giovanni Martelli uh, as a mentor, and he was the founder of plant virology in Italy. And uh, he encouraged all his uh, students not only to describe viruses, but to put order, to classify them, to contribute uh, to the uh, to virus taxonomy, because only 
uh, sharing data and uh, uh, finding similarities uh, helps uh, uh, the advancement of, uh, of, of knowledge. So I started being involved in taxonomy uh, when, I, when I was young. And uh, uh, we can say that taxonomy is, part, is composed by classification and, and nomenclature. So we try to group uh, together biological entities uh, uh, sharing some uh, properties uh, uh, and uh, to, to uh, uh, place them into a, a proper taxonomic uh, uh, rank. And uh, uh, nomenclature is uh, uh, naming the the uh, the taxa uh, we we uh, uh, we established. So taxonomy is uh, really a, a dynamic discipline. I think we must forget about Carl Linnaeus uh, writing in his book. Uh, 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 classification may change if you have new data, maybe species can be moved from one uh, 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 rank to another or, or uh, uh, simply their their status changes and uh, uh, the classification the taxonomy of organism so must be regulated and uh, there are specific international organizations uh, or committees uh, devoted to this so we have one for bacteriology, one for plants, and uh, 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 for for uh, uh, for uh, animals. Various taxonomy maybe is a little bit younger. So we have to go back to the beginning of last century uh, to uh, have some uh, efforts to uh, to classify viruses. Uh, so uh, in uh, 1935, five keys were, were uh, identified uh, to, uh, to classify viruses, and they were all biological properties. Uh, so the mode of transmission, the host range, the symptoms, the longevity in vitro, and the thermal inactivation points. And based on these uh, properties, uh, it was possible to uh, classify 50 viruses into, into groups. Now, if uh, we think of symptoms, for instance, uh, uh, pl uh, plant viruses, for instance, uh, induce uh, uh, really a variety of nice symptoms uh, on the leaves, on the fruits, uh, on the trunk, uh, and uh, uh, different symptoms. However, these are secondary characteristics, so they are related to the effect of the virus on the host rather than on, on, the, on the virus itself. As far as the uh, science progressed, uh, electron microscopy and serology gave uh, their contribution. And we have to, to go up to the end of the 50s uh, to have a, the proposal of a classification based on particle morphology. Indeed, uh, the original paper it refers to elongated uh, viruses, but uh, it, it was a good idea. And uh, uh, here the, uh, you, you have uh, the different uh, uh, morphologies uh, that uh, virus particles affecting plants may show. So you can have very elongated particles, elongated particles, uh, segmented uh, particles, uh, you can have isodiametrics, bullet point, uh, bullet shaped uh, particles. So it's uh, an aesthetic uh, classification, but uh, it was uh, it was based on on the virus and not on uh, on the effect. And uh, if uh, uh, you uh, take advantage of electron microscopy studies, uh, you can see that uh, a, a contribution to, uh, to taxonomy uh, may uh, be obtained here, at least at the genus level, because here we have, for instance, elongated particles of the genus uh, potivirus, 
And uh, these are uh, the pinwheels induced by potato virus Y and uh, other aggregates, membranes. Uh, this is a, a rhabdovirus, uh, very typical, inducing uh, alteration in the nucleus of the plant. And here you can see all the particles exiting from the nuclear membrane. And uh, 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 there is a, 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 an enlargement here. So all these are, are virus particles. Uh, here we have two types of uh, isodiametric iso uh, viruses. Uh, so a member of the genus Cucuma uh, virus uh, with the typical in uh, cellular inclusions. And my favorite uh, genus, the Tombus virus. So they are isodiametric uh, particles. The virus uh, can uh, mul uh, multiply, can uh, replicate uh, on uh, peroxisomes or on mitochondria. So this is a taxonomic discriminant and uh, uh, they induce uh, uh, the formation of typical multivesicular bodies in infected cells, which are the hallmark of thrombus virus replication. Anyway, several systems uh, uh, of classification of uh, viruses were proposed, but none uh, was uh, successfully employed. So the only uh, 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 definition which was maintained is the nomenclature in English. So viruses had the name in English, but it was a chaos. So we have to go up to 1966 uh, to uh, have the establishment of the International Committee on Nomenclature of Viruses, which turned into the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses in 1973. And now we have been working, well, not, not me, not all the time, but uh, the, the, the CTV has been working for 50 years, over the 50 years, and so it seems it's okay. Now, how is organized the ACTV? We have an executive committee composed by the president, who is a plant virologist, Professor Murilo Zerbini from Brazil, the vice president, uh, three secretaries, uh, business data and proposal secretaries, who are the officers of the ICTV, Senate subcommittee chairs and elected members. So the executive committee now is composed by 23 uh, people. Then there are the life members uh, who are scientists who gave outstanding contribution uh, to uh, the progress of virus taxonomy. The national representatives who are uh, suggested by the expression of uh, national societies, they uh, they represent the society in, uh, in the ICTV and then the subcommittees, three subcom uh, seven subcommittees, sorry, uh, more or less related to the host. So we have plant, uh, bacterial, uh, archaea, fungal, and for uh, the uh, animals, uh, they are also subdivided uh, according to the genome composition. And then the core of the CTV is the, uh, 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 is, uh, the study groups. So there are groups of experts, uh, usually of a family, but we have also some higher rank study groups. And uh, uh, they have a chair uh, who enrolled the members. So it, it, it's, it, we presume that the best scientists in, uh, in for the, uh, the family are are involved and uh, they uh, and they participate acti actively to the uh, ICTV activity. So uh, activity. So in numbers, uh, uh, we have a lot of people because uh, because uh, beside the, the the executive committee, we have a huge number of study groups. For instance, in the plant viruses committee, twenty two study groups means uh, two hundred people, and uh, so this adds competence to, to, uh, to, to the ICTV. And in fact, the activity of the study groups uh, and of the executive, executive committee uh, uh, is expressed by the number of proposals, which is not the number of species proposals. Uh, and uh, in, in the last three years, uh, more than 1,000 proposals were 
were elaborated and uh, prepared and, and approved. So the virological community is highly represented in, in the ICTV. Now, the, the mission of the ICTV is to develop an international, internationally agreed taxonomy for viruses because it must be universal. And uh, uh, same for the name, international agreed names for virus taxa. The, what happens in the ICTV is public. So uh, we have uh, to communicate the decisions, the processes uh, by holding meetings, publishing reports, publishing, publishing papers, uh, but above all, the maintenance of the official index of virus tax in an open access and public website. So the, the ICTV website is really open to the community and has a lot of resources, which I will show you later. And uh, contrary to other, other committees in other taxonomy who um, take care of the nomenclature, the ICTV is responsible for both classification and nomenclature of, of virus taxa. Now, the, um, the uh, decision-making process is uh, uh, quite, quite, it's like a paper. So in, uh, in spring, uh, the uh, new proposals uh, come from the study groups, are, are prepared, are, are submitted uh, to the, the subcommittee chair, discussed in, in, uh, in the executive committee, uh, then they are accepted, uh, revised, a major or, or minor revision, and uh, then uh, they undergo a second vote in, uh, uh, by the executive committee, and then they are offered for ratif ratification by the all uh, ICTV members. So uh, the, the uh, ratification vote for last year proposal is ongoing right now and will end uh, in uh, at the end of April. And then the official taxonomy will be released in the, in the website. Now, uh, who can uh, uh, create a, a virus tax? It is not a closed process, so anyone can submit a proposal. So it can be uh, any any interested or the discover of a, a, a virus. The mostly the the study groups and the committee chairs who scan the literature and eventually propose new species, genera, order. This is done uh, through uh, two dedicated documents, so an Excel spreadsheet where the uh, actions, uh, the taxonomic actions are um, illustrated, so uh, establish a new species, establish a new order, or move the species, uh, rename, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, the supporting evidence must be uh, provided in a separate Word uh, document. So once the proposal is assembled, uh, the, it is submitted to a committee chair and then uh, uh, it, it undergoes all the, all the process I, I have uh, shown. Now, uh, the, to, to make a proposal, I, uh, I'm speaking about species because it's the basic rank and, uh, and it's easier. Uh, uh, some demarcation criteria must be met, and uh, uh, they are uh, uh, listed in uh, the, the the reports in the ICTV websites, and they usually consist of a combination of biological and properties and molecular uh, data. So for a plant virus, we have the host range, the vectors, the transmission mode, the serology, whatever we know about the biology. And then uh, uh, the sequence is required and uh, possibly the genome organization, the nucleotide uh, and the amino acid identity, which ma must meet the, uh, the threshold proposed and uh, all other kinds of 
of molecular molecular characteristics. Of course, uh, 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 a number of these uh, criteria must be must be met to have uh, a, 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 the proposal for a new species, uh, and the criteria vary. Uh, because, uh, for instance, from uh, some genera, the only uh, molecular data are requested uh, for one genus. Still, only biological properties are uh, are considered, even if now they are starting to review the the uh, species demarcation criteria or biological um, characteristics are recommended to be. Uh, to be studied uh, when uh, a species is close to the cutoff uh, for uh, to be considered as a, a new species. Of course, now the amount of uh, virus sequences uh, uh, is increasing due to high throughput sequencing te technologies. So uh, maybe some of these uh, demarcation criteria will be revised over time. Anyway, the um, the concept is the same. So even for animal viruses, uh, they uh, they consider phenotypic or uh, genotypic criteria uh, to separate uh, species and, uh, uh, and and consider them as as new. Now uh, I told you that uh, we we are living a very fast. Uh, world uh, in taxonomy because uh, we had to face the classification of viruses from metagenomic studies. And uh, so this brought the, um, uh, the need to extend taxonomy uh, to, uh, to 15 ranks. Then uh, a, a novelty was introduced that is uh, to name um, taxa after people, which was not uh, common. It was forbidden for virus taxonomy. Uh, I must say this is not authority. So it's just to remember uh, the contribute of, uh, to honor the contribute of uh, uh, renowned virologists. For instance, we have an order Martelli virales, but uh, it's not like fungi that uh, the name goes with the, with the virus. So it, it's very different. And then the introduction, the adoption of the uh, linear binomial nomenclature for, for virus species. So the first big challenge we had to face is uh, uh, to um, uh, to classify the the uh, increase the thousands of uh, viruses uh, discovered by by high throughput sequencing and uh, it is really a big number. Uh, of course, uh, there are no biological information about these uh, uh, these viruses. So the the first question was. Are we dealing with viruses or with sequences? So are we classifying sequences or shall we consider them true viruses? If you think of uh, what comes, uh, what kind of information comes from the genome, well, uh, it's all there because uh, we uh, know that the, the gene content and order, the expression of the genome, the replication strategy, we can predict the proteins, uh, we can uh, uh, analyze uh, in details the sequences to, to find motifs, which may be characteristics of a taxon, and to draw also uh, a, a, a evolution, uh, 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 the evolutionary relationships between between them. So, even if biological uh, uh, properties are are absent, uh, it's up to us to read correctly the genome composition to uh, 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 to see the similarities. Uh, when, with non non viruses, of course, uh, we are dealing with uh, uh, new viruses uh, without uh, any uh, previous knowledge of uh, a disease of the of the etiology. But uh, the the um, advantage is that uh, we can have 
uh, 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 we can analyze the diversity of a given viruses or the, the existence of virus complexes. And uh, if we think of the information we obtain from the analysis of the virome of uh, uh, wild plants, uh, of weeds, uh, uh, which can act as virus reservoir, then uh, uh, maybe these are very important from an epidemiological point of view, and uh, uh, we can predict spillover. And so, uh, it, it is uh, important to to uh, to deal carefully with these new uh, new uh, newly discovered viruses. Also, maybe uh, the the biological uh, uh, properties may be studied only for uh, those viruses which are representative of uh, uh, new uh, genera, new families, new orders. So. Uh, completely new uh, new uh, taxa. In any case, we must recognize that uh, 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 sequencing runs, runs fast and uh, faster than biology. So we have to uh, to to reconcile these two uh, uh, paces. Uh, one thing I I, I uh, feel it important is sharing raw data in public database, but because keeping libraries. Uh, uh, does not help anyone. Maybe somewhere else there is somebody uh, uh, studying the same uh, sequence, the same virus, uh, but from a biological point of view. And, uh, 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 you know, I, I, I have two, two words, service and sharing. Uh, I think that these are really the basis for, for, for good science. So, I think that uh, uh, how throughput sequences will not lead us to a biological desert, but maybe will enrich our biological uh, knowledge. So if we feel that all the criteria uh, required for, uh, to classify a, a virus into a species are contained in, in, in the sequence, then what is mandatory is to have a very careful sequence quality uh, control. And uh, the possibility uh, of uh, mistakes or drawbacks are that uh, maybe we can, uh, some uh, mistakes in assembling uh, sequences coming from mixed virus population, we can uh, uh, obtain artificially chimeric genomes uh, which do not exist. Uh, it is more difficult to uh, fully characterize viruses uh, with segmented genomes because if they are new, we never know if we have all the pieces or, 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 or not. And some confusion may come from endogenous viral like elements because they are transcribed, so they will be present in the RNA pool. But once it, uh, that all the uh, controls are are carried out. Uh, sequences, uh, viruses coming from metagenomic studies represent richness and uh, they uh, will uh, help us uh, to expand the taxonomy, but also to study diversity, ecology, and, and impact. So at the ICTV, it was decided not to distinguish these viruses from uh, 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 those coming from uh, a, a natural uh, isolation. So we don't have candidatus virus or blah, blah, associated virus. They are uh, bona fide virus, virus species. So what we had to do is to prepare the, to the, the, the place to allocate all these, all these new uh, viruses. And here you can see what we uh, had, what was the, the, the uh, virus taxonomy up to 2017. So we had only five ranks, species, genus, subfamily, family, and order. But it was necessary to expand the taxonomy to a 15 rank structure. So from realm to species. And uh, here, please don't consider the numbers because these are those of the original uh, uh, paper, but uh, the number of species has doubled by now. So uh, you can have an idea of how fast uh, uh, taxonomy goes. 
So uh, what we see is that uh, the um, the the uh, uh, we are close to to a, a linear taxonomic system because uh, uh, because we have the fifteen ranks that every every um, uh, taxonomy has, and so we are ready to accommodate all the all the. Uh, 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 all the new data coming from the analysis of the pyrosphere. And maybe some of you may remember this. This is uh, David Baltimore's classes, and uh, uh, which are, are I think they are still taught because uh, uh, they are immediately uh, understandable. So uh, uh, the, uh, the vi uh, virus species are divided based on the genome composition. And uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the CTV is more or less uh, uh, based on Baltimore classes. Uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, we uh, use more or less them. They are reflected in the, in the creation of the realms of uh, in, in virus taxonomy. In fact, the first realm uh, proposed uh, was the riboviria. So all RNA viruses using RNA dependent RNA polymerase uh, for replication, they belong to the realm riboviria. And uh, uh, even if they are, uh, of course, they include uh, viruses infecting different hosts uh, or a, a wide genetic diversity, they all belong to this uh, to this uh, realm. And uh, now we have six realms: one for DNA, uh, the single strand DNA viruses, uh, one for double strand DNA viruses. So we still recall. Uh, somehow Baltimore Baltimore classes. So now the 15 ranks recall the linear taxonomic uh, system and uh, the, uh, so we uh, were led to to uh, to, to uh, try to establish a similar system also for virus taxonomy. Now the Latinization, the binomials are not an invention of last of the last three years, but the discussion started in 1971, where uh, when an effort uh, to uh, to find uh, a, a, to establish a Latinized binomial nomenclature was recommended, even if more than 50 years uh, have passed. Uh, all the uh, attempts to establish a standardized nomenclature for virus species failed. And up to the binomials, the, there was no standardized format for, for them. And uh, here we, you have an example, now, now it's old, but uh, of uh, how was the, the naming of virus species for uh, coronaviruses. Here you see, the genus name and one number, then uh, uh, the name with uh, an acronym, then the genus is after after the host. Uh, five words, six words, it's a mess, absolutely. So the need to uh, establish a, a, a standardized format for, uh, for virus species it, it, it was really pressing also because uh, the, uh, there was a sort of ambiguity. Uh, uh, following the, uh, a paper by Mark Rang and Bortel, uh, the concept of virus species was, was introduced, which is different from the virus because virus species is a concept of mind. It's a human... Uh, uh, abstraction, but the virus uh, is what you have on your bench, what you inoculate, what you isolate from a plant. So uh, uh, they uh, conceptually they are very different. But uh, we lived in an ambiguous world before binomials because uh, virus and virus species names overlapped, so they were the same, and uh, the distinction. Uh, was in the in the syntax 
the, the how uh, you uh, wrote them. So this species had a, a first word capitalized and was written in italics. The virus name had the first uh, word uh, in lower case and in normal text. So cucumber mosaic virus, italics first uh, and capitalized is a member of the genus cucumovirus, blah, 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 species. Plants infected by cucumber mosaic virus, lower case, no italic, that's the virus. Uh, trusting on a font to, to, to mark such a conceptual difference was at, le at least unwise. Well, uh, while all other taxonomies used the binomial, so two words italicized, the genus was the first capital letter, the second was the species epithet, lower case letter, and this gave a, a clear distinction between the species abstract concept and the, the physical object, because you don't shake your hand with an homo sapiens, but with your human friend. So the, uh, there was no, there is no problem uh, from a conceptual point, point of view. So at the CTV, I was not there yet. They started thinking that uh, the, the species name could be converted into uh, linear binomials. Because this uh, is very uh, advantageous because uh, uh, we align at last virus taxonomy with other biological taxonomies. We have always been suffering from a complex because of our viruses, living organisms or not. So now we are like everyone else. Now the, the binomial clarifies the difference between the virus and the species name. Latin is a safe language because it does, it's a dead language more or less, but it, it is historical, no, not many characters, no diacritics. It is stable, so it guarantees uh, to be the same in every language and will never be translated contrary to what happens to virus names because maize mosaic virus uh, you can see here how many uh, in how many languages uh, can be uh, can be written so it is very difficult to uh, to to take advantage of an italic here but if we you refer to the virus species name is alpha nucleorhabdovirus mildis it's just one and then you can call your virus as you like and using a, a bin, binomial virus species name makes uh, searches in database very uh, more easier and, uh, uh, and uh, handy because you look for one uh, name and you don't have to, 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 to try with different, uh, different names. So uh, I think that science will benefit uh, uh, from, uh, from this. Now, contrary to what is uh, often believed, uh, the, the decision is not top down, but uh, a public consultation, indeed, there were two, uh, uh, was launched uh, for, uh, to, to have the opinion of, of, the, of the community. And uh, also a forum was, uh, was uh, uh, opened in the ICT the uh, website uh, and uh, also socials, uh, social channels were were involved, and uh, of course uh, the contrary, the, the against voices uh, were uh, louder. But anyway, uh, 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 there was a, a number of very interesting points. For instance, young scientists were in favor of the binomials because they did not suffer from tradition, from uh, uh, the the habit to 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 call a, a, a virus and the virus species and the same, but plant virologists, they they were the 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 most uh, 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 convinced uh, uh, the, against the binomial nomenclature of virus species. Of course, we have these wonderful names, and uh, nobody would uh, give uh, them up. But virus names are not are not uh, uh, going to change. So we can keep our 
our wonderful, wonderful name. Other common criticisms were, well, I have to learn Latin, I don't want to learn Latin. Uh, but you don't have, because uh, uh, we have a guidance uh, for creating individual uh, Latinized binomials without any knowledge of, uh, of Latin. And if you don't want to read the paper, you just ask me or anyone in the executive committee and, uh, and uh, we, can, we can help. And also uh, it, it, the, the uh, possibility to give different names to, uh, names to more than 11,000 species uh, uh, seemed uh, impossible. We did it. Uh, or, or I cannot memorize uh, the new species name, but nobody, uh, I think, knows by heart the name of all virus, uh, uh, viruses now. So uh, uh, I think uh, 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 the, these are uh, this has been uh, more or less overcome very easily. Uh, if you think that four hundred thousand Coleoptera species are named all with binomial uh, names, then I think that we can we can live with with uh, 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 eleven thousand of uh, of new names. So the binomial nomenclature for virus species uh, was uh, approved. And uh, it, but uh, it, it is composed by the genus name and not a Latinized, uh, a Latinized uh, a species epithet, by, uh, but a free form species epithet. I can say that uh, at the executive committee, they uh, thought that Julius Caesar was out of the door uh, uh, so they decided not to, to, to go for Latinization, but uh, in most cases, free, free form is Latinized. So uh, uh, Latinization is an option, but it is not mandatory. We gave ourselves three years of help to change all the existing species names, uh, uh, but the, uh, the unexpectedly, I must say, the proposal was ratified by all ICTV members. So the, it was unanimously uh, approved. So new species created since uh, 2021 have binomial names, and uh, uh, we uh, have completed the, 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 the process of conversion uh, into binomials of all the, uh, the existing. Uh, names and now they are being ratified. So in one month, uh, we will have uh, a complete binomial nomenclature for virus species. Here there are some examples of what happened in the plant virus committee because more or less all accepted uh, to adopt a Latinized uh, binomial format, except the two uh, families who decided to. Uh, to use the abbreviation of the virus as an epithet. And since free form is free form, uh, it was accepted. So for instance, uh, here we have a grapevine faba virus where the, uh, formerly the, the genus name followed the species, uh, was used as an epithet. Now it's faba virus vitis. Most of the epithets uh, derived from the host. Uh, four words, uh, uh, were converted into two here. We have geographic origin or a reference to, uh, to the symptoms. However, uh, the species virus tomato macule uh, it has been changed, but tomato spotted with virus will stay the same. So common names are not involved in this process. Now, how can we link all taxonomy uh, to uh, two binomials? Because of course we are in a transition and uh, it is difficult also for me to, 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 to think differently. But we have uh, the, uh, the, the ICTV website and uh, uh, there are a lot of resources, but now I, I, I'm just pointing to three, uh, to three. So the taxonomy browser, which I think many know, and uh, you just type the species name and the, you uh, are directed to the, to the taxonomic allocation. The master species uh, list, uh, which is the spread list uh, uh, containing all the current species. So uh, it will be updated in, in one month. 
And my favorite was is the virus metadata resource because it's the spreadsheet containing the the viruses, and and this is uh, this is very very useful. So, for instance, uh, I, I'm sorry because I think it's difficult to read, but this is a master species list, the MSL. So you have all the taxonomy from real to species and all the updates. So uh, here. Uh, the the history of the proposal is displayed and uh, and uh, uh, one can have an idea of what happened to to that species over over time and uh, yeah and uh, the virus metadata resource is my favorite because it links the 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 uh, concept of mind so the taxon uh, with the the viruses, so hmm? sorry. Hey, here it is. So here you have the taxonomy on this side, the uh, species, and the virus name, plus a number of additional information, which is the abbreviation. Uh, for instance, the gene bank entries, the RevSec, the host. Uh, so uh, it's really useful. And here you can see that correspondence uh, with, with the with the tree of life here. So the uh, use of the meta virus metadata resource is not the top for a, a occasional user. So you have to download the, the most recent. Uh, a virus metadata resource, you can search for a virus and you will see the uh, the corresponding species. Now, for instance, uh, uh, here is potato virus Y. Uh, so the name of the species has not been changed yet. It will be uh, very shortly. But for instance, here you see the newly proposed uh, potty viruses last year, and they, they have a, a Latinized uh, a bi a binomial. And uh, uh, now there is a new tool which is uh, uh, which is being uh, developed, uh, uh, which is just a, a, what say a lookup. Uh, so you will dial uh, the, the species name or the virus name, and it will uh, lead you to uh, show you the correspondence. And this is really very useful and has been asked by the community for a long time. So uh, I hope it will be developed by the end of this year. And now here there are some papers uh, which are uh, also accessible in the in the website uh, with guidance uh, for uh, a correct a correct taxonomy and uh, also a correct submission of virus uh, sequences or the requirements to be considered for taxonomic classification. Last is the online report which was published was a hard print. Uh, 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 before now, I think uh, it, it's like an encyclopedia. It's free on the ICTV website. It's a family level, and uh, chapters are written by the ICTV study groups and edited by the executive uh, uh, committee members. And so you have all the information about virus families. So this is very useful for people involved in virology. And uh, corresponding to the to the chapter, uh, a, a two-page summary is published in, uh, in the Journal of General Virology. They are updated every time there is something new in the family. They are uh, uh, updated, and uh, uh, they are very easy because uh, there is the, the, the summary of all, 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 all one family in two pages. So for a quick information is uh, is really great. So in summary, I, uh, I, I said that taxonomy is really dynamic and uh, 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 is uh, a, a very interesting uh, uh, discipline. So, so uh, we had uh, uh, the possibility of uh, classifying the viruses from meta metagenomics by extending uh, the taxonomy ranks uh, to 15. And uh, the adoption of uh, the linear binomial nomenclature, uh, even uh, though with a free for habitat, uh, aligns virus taxonomy 
uh, at, uh, at last to all uh, all, all viral uh, all, all other taxonomies. So now we have completed the process of conversion uh, of viral species names into into binomials, but scientists will happily work with common virus names without uh, uh, without any any change. And if they don't want, they don't even mention in a paper the taxonomy uh, classification. Just one word about collections and biobanking, because, because uh, the ICTV uh, collects information and uh, uh, is responsible for the uh, for for the taxonomy, the classification of viruses, but uh, having uh, the isolates deposited in a collection contributes to the uh, maintenance of vi virus uh, uh, biodiversity, to the knowledge, because uh, a collection must uh, preserve the material. Uh, they must uh, uh, be in line with uh, uh, internationally agreed quality standards uh, and uh, above all they distribute uh, the material to the scientific community so uh, it is really uh, important uh, this is something i've learned uh, uh, recently when i uh, i understood that i'm close to retirement and i want to put order in my in my free, in my freezers that uh, we have really a, a treasure, uh, a biological treasure, which must be maintained in dedicated structure. For instance, now our collection is part of two infrastructures and the, of the European Virus Archive. And uh, so uh, uh, material can travel safely. We can track our, our, our isolates if uh, they are given, but uh, the, the uh, quality of the material is is really high. And this uh, stands in line of what is my feeling of taxonomy, <laughs> so th that uh, uh, we are a community and uh, we like it or not, every virologist is part of the ICTV because whatever we study, we contribute to advancement of knowledge in, in virology. And uh, uh, we must recognize the uh, the uh, uh, the ICTV a uh, sort of proactivity. We are uh, preparing. We are paving the way for future uh, research, for future knowledge. And this is very important in the frame of being prepared to everything. Because I think that COVID taught us that we must know. We must be ready for the future, whatever it is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rita Rubino. That was fantastic. I learned so much and I can only imagine how much work this has been going through. And also to try to convince so many plant virologists across the world that there is a new way to, to describe the names of the new viruses and new species that they have been found. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. This is a, a, an opportunity for all our audience who are here with us, if you would like to ask any question, please put your questions on the chat. And uh, she can, uh, I believe there is already one. Um, there is a question for you, Dr. Luisa, is thank you for the greatest presentation, Orthotospovirus, Orthotospovirus, making sure I'm saying the name correctly, that one of the genus completed rename. I found some spices that lost from list of spices, including tomato necrotic ring spot. So I would like to ask about currently status of the tomato necrotic ring spot virus in the genus Orthotospovirus. Okay, I try because uh, 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 as I told you, I don't know all the viruses on by heart, <laughs> but I, I just have a quick check. <laughs> Because if uh, let me check, oh, I have another computer. So, <laughs> <laughs> so 
So in the meantime, I also recommend everybody, if you wanted to, to put your questions on the chat or otherwise as well, you can raise your visual hand and can allow you to unmute and you can ask your question. Okay, anyway, uh, a tomato necrotic uh, ring spot doesn't, uh, not show. I, I had to check, but uh, we took the original list of species. So uh, maybe it's an isolate. I, I have to check if you want to contact me privately, I can uh, uh, I, uh, and write an email, I can, I can answer. Yeah, or well, another way as well is, Dr. Risa, you can pass the information for me and I can share with all afterwards yeah. with the, the person who asked the question. That would be no problem. I do have a question. You do mention about the Plavit collection, the Biobank. So how this extensive collection contributed for the ICTV work on the virus taxonomy? And what is the role that you envision Biobanks like Plavit? will be playing the future of virology research, especially in the context of immersion and re-immersion plant viruses? Okay, the, uh, the, the problem of the, of the collection is that uh, um, officially ICTV does not encourage the deposit of virus isolating collections because some uh, ask for money. So, uh, and this is, uh, of course, this is ethically not, uh, not, not, uh, not acceptable. Uh, however, many are, are free, so like ours, so, uh, so there is no problem. Uh, the, uh, what we, uh, 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 the contribution of collections uh, uh, to taxonomy is that, for instance, all viruses have been characterized uh, the, there is a, an important collection in uh, in the UK at, at Fera, I think, and uh, they uh, made a wonderful work on historical isolates. And so they really shed light on some viruses which were uh, under known or or uh, or were going to be removed. So. Uh, uh, the ICTV asked for for uh, some help to to uh, to assign species to to characterize unassigned uh, species uh, which now are not allowed to stand. So uh, I think this is very very important uh, for uh, for taxonomy. And uh, of course, the function is different besides characterizing all the all isolates and having an idea of the epidemiology. Or, or, or some or some viruses is that uh, sometimes no uh, a paper is published and the isolate is lost and nobody can uh, continue the research so having the the plant material uh, preserved is, is very good but the same goes for uh, sequence data uh, oh. so all these must be available to the community so this is my my uh, opinion. No, no, it's it's very very good, and and I do I do think that it is very good to have collections like this one. It does help to continue the research if you already have the original isolate, so you can continue these studies because sometimes you just can't have all of these studies done in one group. It's always necessary to collaborate with some others. I do have another question. It's something about the ACTV in itself, and I think that this was really important. You mentioned about how ICTV has been doing your work for 50 years, 51 years now, responsible for the classification and nomenclature of viruses. Could you elaborate on the challenges that ICTV will face in maintaining this new, the consensus on this new virus taxonomy, especially with HGS? You know, there is so much rapid advancement on high throughput sequencing. You mentioned yourself, metagenomics. So how do you build, how, can you elaborate a little bit on the challenges going forward? You know, now, now that you guys already have the framework, but how to be able to maintain the consensus on the virus taxonomy every time they discover some new ones with high, high throughput sequence? How do you see the challenges going forward? I think the challenge is the number. Uh, because, because uh, of course, uh, I, I, dealing with thousands and thousands of, uh, of sequences uh, is quite difficult. Uh, the, uh, I think the uh, NCBI is uh, is doing a lot of work. So the the, <laughs> the three repository uh, sequence repository are helping a lot. 
but uh, so it is just a matter of time and of automatization. So uh, we uh, we have to to develop much uh, tools to uh, to uh, to classify viruses, but uh, with the control, but uh, having part of the of the work done, and also uh, personally, I'm trying to encourage. Uh, young uh, virologists uh, uh, who have a, a, a keen attitude towards bioinformatics to join the ACTV. I would like to have a, 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 a young bioinformatician in every study group because this would help a lot and uh, 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 will make, will prepare the, the, the work for the study group. So uh, maintaining the consensus, this is uh, more difficult because because the uh, the uh, the application of the of the new taxonomy is uh, is difficult. So what I expect uh, is that the literature will be a disaster. <laughs> when, <laughs> so uh, so one thing I I we would uh, maybe prepare some guidelines for uh, for publishers <laughs> to to. A correct, uh, a correct uh, uh, implementation, and and then uh, 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 the the big big challenge I see, and I hope it will be postponed by three years, so I will leave, and uh, is, is uh, the higher order uh, taxonomy because now uh, we have concentrated mostly on species, on genera and families. But now it's time to fill the upper ranks because we are all formed with the five rank. Uh, taxonomy, but we have to go further. So and try to to connect everything as soon as uh, 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 at, at the best at our best. Wow, that's going to be another big challenging, and uh, it's yeah. going to be a lot of more time. So maybe another three years, or maybe more, to be able to get everything on the on the tree of life and all the order. I do have another question. This comes from Nicholas Denanse, and he's from Jeffes. Uh, he said, thank you very much for this very clear presentation. It's clearly a lot of work. My question, a quick look at VMR MLS38 V3 showed that most, all, question mark, Tobamovirus don't yet have a new species name. How can I find out about upcoming changes? Newsletter? Oh, there is a, 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 a tool, there is a mechanism. Yeah. No, uh, uh, once uh, the ongoing ratification work will be completed, so at the end of the month, the, the MSL 39 will be released, version one. So uh, it will be uh, found on the on the website. The, uh, we have a newsletter, uh, you can sign up for it. And a paper is published every year for um, the... Uh, for uh, 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 summarizing all the changes, but of course this takes uh, some time. Uh, what uh, I must do, I I, I still I, I postpone postpone, but I want to prepare a, a paper for plant viruses only, uh, so to an update in plant virus taxonomy uh, to to be sent also to Apple. They ask for it, so. Uh, to 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 international organization, but anyway, if you sign up in the in the newsletter uh, or just visit the, the 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 website in one month, one month and a half, you will find the new one. Oh, this is really good, and that that leads me exactly to. I have one specific question because when you talk about all the the, the different updates and how we can get there with this implementation of the binomial. How do you see the transition impacting the day-to-day? -day? People who are on this webinar, the virologists who are working every day, the plant pathologists, particularly this, this are working in, in, in seed companies, and, and but all the different plant pathologists, how do you see this transition, this new implementation of the virus taxonomy to the day-to-day -day work of these people who are on the bench? Well, I, I see uh, with people working on the bench, there is no need to tra uh, 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 of transition. They will be working with the uh, with, with the uh, virus they have been always working with because it will not change. Uh, the problem uh, comes when they have to mention it. So if they are not informed, uh, the, uh, 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 they will not uh, um, 
update uh, their their, uh, their knowledge but uh, so uh, otherwise it's simple you, you go in the website and 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 you see uh, how to mention uh, the problem may stay with people uh, dealing with regulation uh, with uh, 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 with legislation because because now uh, we have um, uh, we we really took advantage of the of the overlap of the virus species and the virus name. But for instance, pest categorization for insects are done uh, uh, by uh, uh, on the species, not on the common name. Uh, 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 so uh, I I w would expect that uh, for viruses will be the same. But I would very uh, would be very careful because for instance. Some viruses uh, belonging to the same species, one virus is, uh, is dangerous and one not. So uh, I would go with, uh, with the categorization, for instance, for viruses and not for virus species yet. In any case, uh, unless you want to categorize your, uh, your virus, no changes are, are ex to be expected by by uh, field virologists or bench virologists because because the, uh, uh, also uh, for uh, for diagnostic products uh, the, the, there is no need to change the the, the name of the kit uh, so so I I would say uh, uh, that uh, we. We must not leave it dramatically. So it, it just take a note and go ahead. I think you, you did highlight a very important thing. I think for legislators, for people who are doing pest risk analysis within governments, they might find it difficult because it is such a radical change from what they were used to. And I think for us, uh, especially for, for the seed companies where you is to trying to meet all the different legislation that is already a patchwork out there. Uh, Louisa, where there is so many different regulations for the same virus. It is quite scary to imagine that it will be the same virus, but that now will be the extra element where different names will be added because they, they don't know which name to add it to, and that can add even more higher complications. So I hope that you guys will continue the, the you know, to have this advocacy to, to educate a lot of uh, some of the regulators in terms of how they should use the correct name for the virus to not increase the challenges that seed companies already face when they needed to meet the import requirements from all the different countries. Yeah, this is a, this is a big pain. And I think it must be decided by regulators, but with the assistance of or somebody uh, involved. In any case, I saw that in the Apple Global database, they already adopted the new uh, the the new uh, taxonomy, but uh, 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 same scientific name and common name. So they report uh, both, and uh, I, there is not uh, the the, uh, the full correspondence. But I would add the Apple code in the uh, in the <laughs> the virus metadata resource because this will this will be of help. Yes, and, and we will need your help. So the ISAF does have its own uh, pest list database and it's also is listed on Apple and we are including the Apple codes as well now. So I think we will need your support and your help when to be able to make sure that the, we do use the correct names of the viruses, especially now that they are changing. There is a, a lot of information that we would be very grateful for your support. So you I will be contacting you more with uh, things like Whenever this. Whenever you want, uh, I am available. The president is always available, and uh, so we. Thank we, you. Wh whatever we can do, we we will be happy to help. Thank you so much. It's very much appreciated. As you know, the president is a a, a great colleague of mine. Have been my my supervisor when I was doing my master. So thank you so much. I believe that there is no further questions on the chat, and I think that it was a wonderful presentation. You really did clarify a lot of the questions that we have, and I think that, like I said, it is a is a beginning of a collaboration. With I, we will definitely gonna communicating with you, and I would love to host you here in Switzerland as well at the at our offices here at ISEF. So we will continue this wonderful collaboration. And for now, I just would like to say thank you so much to you 
for being here with us for the fantastic presentation and clarification of how the, the we're going to be going ahead on virus taxonomy. And I would like to say thank you to all our audience who are here with us today. I really appreciate everybody who took the time to come to listen and to ask the questions as well. And with that, I would like to say thank you to everybody. And I would like to say that thank you and hopefully see everybody the next time. And Lisa, I will communicate with you soon. Take thank care, you. everybody. Very pleasure. Thank you to you all. Okay. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.